Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be hopping in the boat with father-son duo, Travis and Jace Peterson, and they're gonna break down one of the best fish catching tactics for just about anything you wanna fish for, and that is the Ned Rig. So without further ado, let's jump right in. I'm gonna pass it off to Travis. So today we're out uh, Ned Rigging for largemouth, uh, fishing a weed line. Um, Ned Rigging is become a super popular tactic for for bass, both smallmouth and largemouth. Um, guys are are even uh, rigging plastics for for walleyes on their Ned heads. Um, Northland's got a new jig in their Elite series called the Nedster. There's a little look at that gem. I believe that's three sixteenths there, but. The Ned was really spawned from the, the old uh, worm jig. Jig worming started in, I don't know, the 70s in the Midwest. Um, Nick, your grandpa, he, uh, your grandpa and your great uncle, they, they promoted the jig worm um, to the prominence that it became. And really the Ned is just a, another version. It's a little blockier head, um, plastics, bump up there real nicely, but it's still kind of based on that mushroom shape. And the idea is that you can use it as a vehicle to deliver soft plastics, and we're talking finesse plastics, obviously. Um, we use worms as long as five inches, but a lot of the times we're throwing three and four inch baits. This is, uh, again, like a do-nothing type worm, but you can use craws, different critters. Um, and the idea is it's a vehicle to, to present these baits, but this is a very highly uh, high-end jig. It's got a Gamagatsu hook in it, which is super sharp, super strong. It's a one-aught size, which caters to those smaller plastics and uh, just really fits well together. Next up, Travis and Jace are gonna talk about how and where they like to fish these baits when they're chasing both bass and walleyes. So some of the scenarios where uh, I like to use a Nedster. Um, number one, it's a great tool when I'm targeting smallmouth bass on on rocky type uh, shorelines where I can actually visually see targets. And I'm picking out those targets uh, visually and casting right to them. Um, the way the Nedster's built, it's, it's built to stand straight up. So you wanna cast at those targets and, and just let it fall on a slack line straight down and and allow the bait to stand straight up and smallmouth love that when that the tail of your worm is standing straight up in the water and they'll come and nose down on it and grab it um, that's one scenario as you get deeper and you can't see visually uh, again along lines with the smallmouth um, you know we're looking for for irregularities on the bottom boulders that that we can see in our electronics and we're finding those with electronics and casting to those again letting it fall and letting it sit um, you really can't fish the the Nedster wrong unless you cast it out and fish it too fast. If you cast it out and crank it in, um, probably not gonna get bit, but you wanna fish it slow. You wanna fish it on a slack line and uh, give those fish opportunities to pick it up off the bottom. Uh, moving to largemouth, uh, the, the biggest application that I find for it is fishing on weed lines, say uh, eight to 12 feet of water, um, where I would typically fish a jig worm. And again, it's, it's cast it out, let it fall, um, try to get it to the bottom. A lot of times in the, in the largemouth haunts, there's more vegetation and it's harder to get that, that jig to fall to the bottom, but there's where we might step up our, our weight to actually try to get it down through the canopy and, and get it down by the bottom. Some people would think, why would you throw an exposed jig head for largemouth in, in weeds? Um, it's actually, we want to find the weeds with the jig. We want to get hung up in the weeds. And then one of our techniques is to actually pop it free. And that's why we use braided line a lot so we can have less stretch, pop it out of a cabbage weed or a, a little piece of coontail. And a lot of times then when you let it fall again, that's when you get bit. So those are, those are the applications that I use the Nedster the most. So dad kind of touched on the smallmouth and largemouth, uh, you know, ways to fish it and areas to fish it, uh, the Nedster. But this is something we also have tied up for walleyes almost every time we go out now. Uh, you know, minnows are expensive and sometimes they're tough to come by. And that right there is about as close as you get to a real live shiner or fathead. 
Um, we like to use the black head and then we'll use something with a you know a lighter a lighter bottom darker top and that this one I have is a little tail but same thing that that's gonna look like a little a little you know fat head or shiner on the bottom uh, we'll cast it at points humps but then we'll also use it on the weed line just like we do for bass now when it comes to color there's a lot of schools of thought you have a natural head approach you have chartreuse you have green pumpkin plastics blue uh, stuff that imitates craw. There's a lot of different things you can do, uh, but now the Petersons are going to share some of their thoughts on how they like to think about color. There's a little largey on the Nedster. Let him go. So as far as colors, um, I'm a big fan of green pumpkin. This one chewed up my worm a little bit, but um, I like green pumpkin for large mouth and small mouth. It's just a good all-around color. Um, Couple other options if you want to stick with the darker hues. Um, a June bug type color looks good with a black head. That's actually the the weedless Nedster right there with the the weed guard. And then of course um, this has become quite popular in recent years, especially in the Midwest. Is a chartreuse jig head. For some reason it it uh, triggers bites. So uh, the Nedster also comes in that bright chartreuse, and that matches up good with with, uh, again, green pumpkin. There's a good swally. Chomp that Nedster. Little green pumpkin. Got my worm too. Awesome fish though. Another good color is Rusty Craw. Just a brown. This is part of the weedless Nedster as well. But then you match it up with a little brown and orange. It really imitates a you know, crayfish uh, use this color a lot for, for smallmouth and walleyes as well. And one of the biggest things that people want to know is when I'm stopping in at the tackle shop or your box store, what do I grab? Why do I grab it based on what I'm fishing for? So next up, Jace is going to share some thoughts that you should have in mind, um, some advice on sizes, colors, all that, that you should be thinking about when you go to pick up some jigs. The Northland Nedster comes in four sizes and four colors, as well as the Weedless Nedster. It comes in a chartreuse, black, green pumpkin, and rusty craw. Sizes include eighth, quarter, three sixteenths, and a five sixteenths. Uh, I really like the quarter and the eighth uh, for anywhere fishing, you know, five to 12 feet. Um, deep weed lines, I'll step up to three sixteenths. And anything over 20 feet, I'll step, you know, into that five sixteenths, or if it's really windy, um, if you're just going into a bait store and want to pick out, you know, one size, uh, one color, green pumpkin is really hard to beat. And then a quarter is also a tough size to beat. You can fish it in five feet, but you can also fish it out to 20 feet. Um, one thing that I really like to look at is fall rate. Uh, that usually triggers that bite. Um, the deeper you go, that's why I change it sizes. Uh, I like to have that bait fall fairly quick to the bottom and that's that reaction strike. Usually most of the time your bites are, you know, as soon as it falls, you cast it out there and you pick up your slack and that's usually when you have the fish on. Um, one other thing that we like to do is fish it on a slack line and that means that, you know, it's always towards the bottom or on the bottom. Uh, usually you're, you know, you cast it out, give it slack line, pick it up, make sure anything, you know, nothing's there go back to slack line and it's you know it's a cadence um, and when you usually when you reel on that slack line is when you have that fish on um, one other cool thing about the Nedster is it has a great plastic keeper right there this one's caught a few fish as you can see but it's still keeping that little stick bait on there just perfectly fine it also has a real nice flush head um, something sometimes we will add just a little bit of glue there but it's nice for stick baits because it f makes it real flush. Next up, Travis is going to talk about why this bait and this tactic has become so popular, not only for casual anglers that are just looking to catch some fish, but also for competitive anglers who are looking to win tournaments. So we do a lot of tournament fishing, and I can tell you that it doesn't matter if we're fishing smallmouth or largemouth. Um, Pretty much every body of water that we go to, every event we fish, um, almost everybody has a Ned Rig tied on these days. And, and one of the reasons is 
It's a finesse bait that catches fish that have seen other things. Um, it's not intimidating. It's something that uh, doesn't spook fish. And, and some of the lakes that we're fishing, you know, for those events are definitely uh, getting pressure. So it's a great tournament uh, choice. But um, when I have the opportunity to take friends fishing or if I've got a guide trip, <laughs> I'm gonna have these rigged up for pretty much all of my guests. And uh, the reason is you can't fish them wrong um, again, unless you unless you uh, fish it too fast, um, and you want to make sure that you're getting bottom contact now and then, um, and because it's such a finesse little bait, fish grab it and they hold on to it, and you don't have to um, be a, an experienced fisherman to to feel the bite always. Um, bass will grab that nedster with a little piece of plastic on it, and they'll swim around with it for a while, and uh, it just catches fish. Um, whether you're tournament fishing or just fishing for fun. So if we get into real thick weeds and we're having trouble, you know, getting that jig through there, that nedster, then we'll go to the weedless nedster. And this has got two small little finesse wires on it. But don't let the, the fine wire fool you. That is titanium and that has memory and it doesn't, it doesn't get bent out of shape. You can catch bass, put them in the net. Um, and they don't get they don't get bent. They'll go right back to their same shape. So that's a that's a high end weed guard that uh, Northland decided to put on that jig and make it right. Um, this is dynamite in the in the weeds. Another option in the finesse along the finesse lines um, is Northland's new finesse football jig. Uh, a lot of guys like to throw football jigs on the weed line. Um, we're talking skirted, um, typical your your conventional skirted bass jig with a football head design. Um, but when you want to get finesse, we go, we, we forego the, the skirt, we go with just that exposed hook, and we put a craw type plastic on there that uh, will emulate a crawfish. The areas that we're going to throw this are where we've got some, some hard bottom. Maybe we're fishing a rock pile or, a, or a, a, a flat that has a hard bottom on it, some scattered rock, and that football head will, will scoot along the bottom. Um, we like to keep bottom contact when we're fishing a football head and almost drag it and let it bump into rocks and when it bumps into rocks it'll it'll tip up and make those you know, make that plastic work for you but that's a great option too um, when you're in those hard bottom areas well that's about all we got for you in this video the ned rig is one of the absolute most effective baits i always have it tied on pretty much for anything that I'm chasing. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you learned something, and if you did, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming in the future. And until then, we will see you in the next one.